Segmented client data can be one of the greatest asset to a travel agency. Knowing all the data about your existing clients, like when they last booked, where they travel to, what are the names of their family members and kids, can all help you establish a better relationship with your clients and is crucial to any travel agency's success. Despite knowing all this, very few travel companies have a centralized place to store all this data. This data is usually all over the place, from a consultant's brain to an accountant's invoice. Hi, my name is Vishal Mehra. I've been a part of the global tourism industry since 1989. I've had the good fortune of working with multiple nationalities and launching countless destinations in India, Middle East and Europe. Today, I help companies with lead generation and achieving vertical growth, leveraging the power of modern day automation tools and a CRM plays a critical role in this. I want to show you how your agency can start using a free CRM tool called HubSpot and customizing it for the needs of a travel agency. This tool HubSpot comes in two flavors, free and paid. We will start using the free tool. It is free for up to a million customer records and for unlimited number of users. They do have paid options as well. And these can be upgraded as and when you need them and for as many people as you want them. So you don't have to upgrade for your entire team. If you just want the marketing to have a marketing upgrader pack, you can do that. If you just want your sales to have a sales upgrader pack, you can do that. So it's, it's totally up to you. By using a CRM, you would not only be able to get all your data in one place, but also have a better overview of your customers. And I will guide you throughout the process. I would literally handhold you like I do with my clients. And I'll explain you things so that you understand how the CRM can be customized to your agency's uh, requirements. So I've been using HubSpot now for well over five years. We tested out about 35 different tools while we were in the process, while we were starting our journey. We were on a paid tool and the paid tool was able to do a whole lot less than what HubSpot free tool could do for us or what HubSpot free version could do for us. Having assisted 50 plus travel companies where I have set up the HubSpot CRM tool for them, I want to today make this seven part series starting with this video, which is the part one and go through every segment of what is there and how you can customize it so that you are able to get all your data together. This would help your company grow. So before we get into the video, before I start showing you how the process works, I just have a request. I would request you to please subscribe to this channel. Your subscription, your comments, your likes helps me grow and create more content it also works as a motivation for me. So this lets me create more content which will be beneficial to agencies and small businesses. Thank you for your subscription. Let's dive in. So here we are on the website of HubSpot. Once you're here, you would need to go and get yourself a free account. So we'll start by, you know, registration process. What we're looking for is we're looking for the free CRM. There's a whole lot of other things that you will see here. Uh, they have the CMS hub, the service hub, the sales hub and the marketing hub. You currently need to start with the free CRM and as your agency grows, as your needs grow, you can then go ahead and you know take in the marketing hub and the sales hub. These two would be ideal. So if you had a marketing team and you needed more functionality for the marketing team and you wanted to make sure that the data stayed within the organization, then getting a marketing hub is a great idea. Similarly, if you wanted to keep your sequencing tool within the organization and not use a third party tool, because later on, when we come to sequences, I will be talking about uh, what kind of follow up tools you can use. These are these are third party tools and they don't uh, integrate with HubSpot itself. If you wanted to keep the whole data within HubSpot, then you'll have to go to the starter pack of, um, of sales hub in, in HubSpot and you can you can then activate it for one person or two people. So both marketing hub as well as uh, sales hub start at about $50 per user per month. But for now, we just want to start with the free CRM. When you get to the free CRM, when you press this button, you have two options to sign up. You can sign up with Google. And to people who know me, I may sound like a broken record, but I'm always in favor of companies shifting or travel companies shifting their email to G Suite. G Suite is a much better way to operate. Having your own IMAP address or having it on Microsoft Exchange will, will, will never give you the same functionality what having it on G Suite would because because remember, a lot of apps, a lot of extensions are built for Google Chrome or Chromium-based browsers and for G Suite. 
You know, you can take your email to a whole new level, including running a some small CRM within the Gmail itself. I would, I would honestly recommend to anybody who is in the market or who is looking to optimize their processes to consider signing up with G Suite. It's it's a great tool. And if you happen to be in India, you spend about 124, 125 rupees per user per month. Elsewhere, it's about six dollars per user per month, and it's absolutely affordable option for having a robust email solution from Google. So anyways, how do you want to sign up? You want to sign up with Google or you want to put in your first name, last name and your email address. In my case, I've already signed up, but I will just walk you the process. When I go here, once you press it, it'll say go check your email. And then if you go and click it, confirm it there, that's it. If however, you were going to use G Suite for or Google for signing up, then it would not be a problem at all. I mean, you could technically sign up with your Gmail account as well, and then configure your company email address at a later stage, you could do that also that works as well, go verify the account and then log into it, that'll be that'll be your next step. So once you log in, this is the kind of you know, dashboard you're going to see, it could be a little different. You know, it's a, they keep on changing it around, so it could be a little different. And uh, what we're doing in this particular video is we're just going to go and do a little bit of uh, setting up. All the other things, contacts, conversations, marketing, sales, service, automation and reports, they are separate videos. I'm going to make separate videos for them so that we can deep dive into the functionality of every single one of them and it, it makes sense for you. Also, it is important to mention here that HubSpot probably has one of the best knowledge bases out there. They have extensive documentation and I'm a huge fan of going through this documentation. How I learned this software was going through the documentation and trial and error. If you have the time, please do go ahead and take a look at the documentation. But at this moment, let's jump in. So we're going to press this icon here, which is the wheel and we're going to come in here. Now by default, when you sign up, you would be the super admin. So the first email address that you're using to sign up is going to be the super admin. And here you can configure your language. So wherever, whichever country you are from, whatever language you want to use, you can come here and configure it. They have Deutsch, English, Spanish, Francais, Netherlands, Portuguese, and I presume this would be Mandarin. Uh, in our case, it's English and we are in India, so that's the date and number format we're going to use. So as we scroll down, then it'll ask you, please pick a default page. So where do you want your login screen to redirect you to? Do you want it to redirect you to the activity feed? Do you want it to redirect you to ads? So your marketing could actually choose that they want to be redirected to ads. Uh, as your manager could choose the activity feed, your your team members could choose whatever uh, works for them. So if you if you want to log into deal straight away, you can do that or you can log into your conversations inbox. Now by default, if you ask me how I recommend is that for your team members, always let them log into the email. Email for the conversations inbox, email for their own inbox because that way they can start seeing the queue and then they can move to the tasks and other other things. It also gives you the opportunity to set up a signature. So every user of yours can set up their signature here. You can write it, put in all the hyperlinks you want, or if you have a HTML signature already created, just come here and paste the raw HTML and you can see the preview here. Moving down, you can choose to put in this link if you want an unsubscribe link, or you could switch it off completely. You could enable the meeting link or you could switch it off completely. Now in my line of work, I keep my meetings link on by default because as somebody who consults companies, majority of my work happens on, on long meetings. So I use this link. You can of course keep it on or off. Moving up to the next step is notifications. These are important for you to understand because how do you want to be notified every time a task is due, an email is overdue, a meeting is due or any prompts that come in from the system? Do you want to be notified by the email? For which of these do you want to be notified about? Do you want to get desktop notifications? Now in my case, I prefer to get either a browser notification or a desktop notification, which is as a pop-up. If this was my main HubSpot account, I would have allowed the notifications here. So in which case, if I had any reminder, it would pop up on the uh, HubSpot channel here. You also have an option to integrate other apps. Now that's something which we'll do in the last video. We'll go into the marketplace and take a look at it. And then just so that you know, HubSpot has its own uh, mobile app as well. 
though it's a little limited, but it is there. Next comes your security. How do you want to secure your account? Do you want to use a two-factor authentication? And in case you are resetting your email address, would you want to completely exit out and then re-log in? Or if a user has left the organization and you have transferred the data, the contacts and the communication over to somebody else, you can come here and delete the user account. So that, that all happens in the security part. The next one is the account defaults. The way you set it up is going to dictate how the rest of the company gets to see it. The account name, language, time zone, you can set up the branding right here. So by default, you can set up your address, you can set up your company domain name, the company name, you can set up your logo and you can set up your brand colors. To set up the brand colors, all you need is the hexa code. If you don't know how to pick up the hexa code, use an extension like Color Picker on Google Chrome or, or Mozilla Firefox. Once you've got that extension, click on it and hover it over your main colors in, on your website and you will get your hexa code. So you can use that hexa code here to choose the brand colors. And lastly, it lets you choose the currency. So what is the default currency going to be? As a travel agency, a lot of companies I've seen would try to do it in the local currency. Now, I had a client in South Africa. For them, it made sense because they only communicated in the local currency. They didn't want anything to do with dollars. But otherwise, majority of the people would prefer to use the USD as the currency. You can set it to whatever, whatever works for you. There are a few more things that you need to understand. And that is to do with where your contacts, companies and privacy consent would come in. This is all something that you will have to come and understand a little bit more. And we're not going to go into the properties here because we do it when we go to the contacts because I need to create custom properties. So we will do it once we are in that. Same thing applies for conversations. We'll do it later. What we want to do just now is we just need to do our email integration for this video. And that would be you have to connect your inbox. So we've already connected a team inbox here. So if you had any email address like a sales info, hello, or whatever where your majority of the leads dropped in or the general communication came in, that is going to be your team inbox. And once we go to conversations, we will talk about team inboxes there. And this is where you would come to set up your team emails and you'll come to set up your own email inbox. So once you have set this up, you will be good to go. Sorry, I should have mentioned that if you have to set up our inbox, we'll have to go to conversations and set up the inbox. Ideally, I recommend that you set up these two before you proceed to the next stage that is contacts. You set up your team inbox and you set up your own inbox. So in my case, I've set this up as a, as a team inbox and this is conversations inboxes. And then the next one is the email integration. And I want you to set up your email as well. So that is all I want to do. I want you to do in this video because the next video is then going to get more specific and we will keep on coming back here to, to the settings option a couple of times to set up a few things. Now HubSpot also has a HubSpot extension. They have an extension for Google Chrome, which means if you download this extension and you are viewing your email, specifically you're viewing your Gmail in your browser, then the extension would bring the entire functionality of the CRM over to the inbox. That is a great thing. If you are using HubSpot and Office 365, then you can connect that in the Office 365 account. Again, it works if you're going to be using your browser to access your email. If you are on Windows and you use Microsoft Outlook, but only on Windows, then you can also download the HubSpot plugin, which will then integrate with your Microsoft Outlook and bring the functionality of HubSpot over to your Microsoft Outlook as well. So that's what the extension does. If you ask me honestly, I prefer to work on a browser. I have about six or seven extensions that I use with my G Suite account. And these kind of help me automate majority of my tasks, which would otherwise take a lot of time. So I think I moved away from using desktop client for emails a while ago. I prefer to use a Mozilla Firefox for most of my work. And when it comes to email, I prefer to use a Chromium based browser and a G Suite because my emails are all on G Suite. So, so it works very well for me. Then you have the option to log and track all emails. Any email that you send, if you BCC this email address that you will get, not necessarily the one that you're seeing on your screen, but if you BCC the email address that you're going to uh, get when you sign up, start BCCing it, it will automatically log all the conversations in the CRM and start creating contacts from that. If you're going to use a browser and you've already got the HubSpot 
plug in there, then these would this would happen automatically. You don't have to do anything for it. And lastly, we have the configuration. So what font do you want to use? There is a limited choice, but you do have a choice. So if you wanted to play around with the font a little bit, you could do that. But do remember any change you make, whether it is changing the color, whether it is changing font size or any other change, if you do not press save, it will not get saved, it will be lost. So do remember to press save. So there you have it guys. This is all I have for you in this video. We would meet in the next video where we will go and deep dive into the contacts. I thank you for your time. If you think this information like this is useful to you, please do consider subscribing to the channel. It helps a lot. Do give your comments. If you like the video, press the like button. It tells YouTube the content is relevant. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. This is Vishal Mehra signing off. Bye-bye.